On the 26th of October 1992, a long-awaited computer-aided ambulance dispatch system went online in central London. The system was said to be one of the most sophisticated in the country, but its implementation had not been fully thought through. Ambulances in London had previously been divided into three sectors, but the system was changed to work on a pan-London basis. When a message went out, an automatic electronic response was activated if the crew was unable to accept the call. Immediately, there were problems with the software. As each call came in, it wiped some of the computer's memory. The effects were cumulative. The more calls, the less memory. The impact of a software change had not been properly assessed. In a few hours, London's ambulance service was at a complete standstill. Back in June 1974, a chemical plant in Flixborough was practically demolished by a massive explosion. A decision had been made to make a change and install a bypass pipe. This change wasn't questioned at any stage or effectively monitored. Once the pipe was installed, early warning signs that something was wrong were ignored. The explosion killed 28 people and 36 were seriously injured. The report on the incident proved conclusively that the company had failed to manage change safely and efficiently. In June 1988, the people of Camelford in North Cornwall found their water was starting to taste bitter and unpleasant, and within a few hours, many people began to feel violently ill. Started off with mouth ulcers, lumps in the glands, excess tiredness, moods, and it, my health deteriorated from then on. The local water board had made a change in personnel and hadn't communicated the correct procedures. A relief driver had entered the water treatment plant with a load of liquid aluminium sulphate solution intended for storage and dilution. He'd never visited the site before and had only been given a rough idea of where to offload the chemicals. He opened what he thought was the right tank and inadvertently dumped all 20 tonnes into the main water system. These three examples illustrate the cost of badly managed change. The first consideration is, of course, always safety, limiting the risk of accident. There's also the question of personal liability, the legal implications, the impact in terms of cost and company image. When properly managed, change is a positive force. It helps us to keep competitive. In the oil and gas business, any change has to be carefully assessed to establish the level of risk. We should all be familiar with a safety management system, the safety case and the SEMA safety report. These systems demand consideration and input from everyone, onshore and offshore, if they're to remain living documents. We're all responsible for them. The safety case is the most important document we have on the platform. It identifies the hazards and risks of this platform. It identifies the standards and procedures that we will follow to manage this platform. And most importantly, it is a live document. The safety case is a case for safety. It identifies the hazards and demonstrates the safeguards we have in place. It's vitally important to us because it gives us the structure by which we operate on the installation. SEMA is essential for the uh, Bacton installation for identifying hazards, reducing risks and setting out procedures. It identifies the risks within this terminal and then analyzes those risks and reduces those risks to a minimum. The safety management system plays a critical role in our operation and AMOX are about to introduce an improved way to ensure we meet our legal obligations, to help manage change more effectively, and to keep the SMS accurate and up to date. It's called the Change Assessment Procedure, or CAP for short. So what is CAP? Well, it's part of the AMOX SMS. It's designed to help people plan for change and make the process more efficient. Replacing the old procedure for modifications, CAP is more streamlined and clearly focused on managing change. In putting the procedure together, we've talked to people at all levels. 
we've taken their views into account to create a realistic and workable system to enable change to happen more easily. Procedures that are introduced or are changed must be done by the correct people. They must be done in an efficient manner and must be done with the minimum amount of paperwork. I'd say it's got to be uh, readily understandable by all who will be involved in it and it's got to be accessible to include the relevant personnel uh, involved in any particular change. So if a procedure was set up to reduce the amount of paperwork it would be uh, helpful. To make changes we've got to ensure that we have a process that can be adhered to easily and operated easily. Um, any new system needs to be streamlined, be uh, extremely focused at, uh, at what we're trying to assess in terms of risks uh, and be easy to use. CAP applies to absolutely everyone at MOX. To help you understand it fully, guidelines are set out in a manual with a flowchart that follows the process through. First of all, is the change worthwhile? Is it a change that needs to go through the CAP process? If so, the facilitator will decide on the level of assessment needed. And based on this decision and the outcome of the assessment, the facilitator will recommend the best way forward and the change can then go ahead. All of this is, of course, designed to maintain the integrity of the safety case. For example, defective pipework is found during maintenance. The obvious solution is to replace it. It's a routine matter. But if the replacement pipe is to a different material specification, what should you do? Although we're talking about a repair situation, this clearly falls within the CAP definition of change and must go through the CAP process. Yeah, well, that uh, vent pipe work, I'm afraid, failed a thickness test and we've had to blank So instead of going ahead with a temporary repair, the originator, that's the person who identified the change, would make a change request to the approval authority. The facilitator is at the centre of the change process. It is his responsibility to examine the proposal, to ensure that the right people are involved and the correct level of assessment is chosen. The proposal would be carefully evaluated, the risks of using the wrong pipework would be clearly identified and then managed. In many cases, he can make the necessary judgment without involving teams of people based on his own competence. This allows AMOX to make the best use of its people. In this case, the risks of a failure due to using the wrong pipework would prohibit a temporary repair. Change may be inevitable, but it doesn't have to be complex or difficult to organise. It's a question of control. Recently, there were plans to install a public address system at a remote location. But the contractor who was preparing the telecoms system to accept the PA hadn't been involved in the risk assessment or told about its outcome. He inadvertently introduced a glitch. The whole network involving the voice, data and the pipeline monitoring system collapsed. The result? a complete production shutdown. The impact of this one change spread across the whole network, causing disruption for 12 hours and lost revenue. With CAP in place, this situation would have been avoided. Well, the problem is they can't hear the PA at this end of the plant. We need to extend Once it. the change had been identified and deemed worthwhile, the facilitator would have made contact with all the relevant people, leading to more appropriate safeguards. Uh, this, uh... <coughs> Potential risks associated with the modification to the system would have come to light and the job would have been approached in a different way. Another example. Before CAP, when an additional fire alarm button needed to be installed, it was a complex affair. The right course of action was determined by a lengthy discussion process followed by a pile of paperwork and an onshore HAZOP, that's a hazard and operability study. Now, that risk assessment process is managed by one person, with greater speed and efficiency. The facilitator studies the problem, goes through the CAP process, which again leads to the correct decision. In this case, the button is simply installed. A controlled change, implemented quickly and effectively. CAP helps make change happen. 
At every stage, change is monitored, assessed and recorded, all helping to maintain the SMS. Many companies have introduced standard procedures which are critically important to minimize risk. With this initiative, AmoX have gone that much further. CAP helps to assess and manage the risks associated with a change, whether procedural, technical or organizational. It involves everybody and has been developed to implement change safely and efficiently, minimizing any risk to both people and the company. CAP will help AmoX move forward in safety.